You're listening to the Mind Your Business Podcast, episode number 52. Today, I'm going to show you how to get unstuck. So, stay tuned. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and I've built a seven-figure internet business that offers the financial freedom to do what I want, when I want. And I'm the first to say that hard work and hustle are not essential ingredients for your success. So how do you build a thriving business from the inside out? This is the Mind Your Business podcast featuring myself and co-host Phoebe Morochek. Phoebe. James, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I'm excited about this episode because this is something that I know I have been in this stuck place. So I'm excited Mm -hmm. to help other people get unstuck. I think this is something that we all as entrepreneurs have experienced. I think this is something that every human alive eventually has an experience of feeling stuck. So in this episode, I'm going to take you through a three-step process to get you unstuck. But before we do that, before we put this awesome experience on for size... We want to talk to what it means to really be stuck in the first place. So Phoebe, you already said that you've had experiences where you felt stuck. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So I always liken it to two different scenarios. The first one is I feel like the little kid that's waiting to jump into the jump rope, but I'm waiting to hit my stride. You know, when it hits the ground and you jump in, that's how I feel. And I'm like, oh, wait, should I go? No, no. The other one is like on a, like in a relay team where you have your hand back and you're waiting for that baton. That's always like the very clear visual picture that I have in my head. And I'm like, I know as soon as that baton hits my hand, I'm off and I can do it and it's going to be great. But in that moment where I don't know when that baton's going to hit, that's kind of in my head. That's what makes the most sense to me. And so I always feel, I feel paralyzed because in a situation where I can do anything, but also I can do anything. And that's really, It's a scary place to be, I think, in one mindset. And then I have to change it to, actually, this is a great place to be because I really can do anything. And so I know that, you know, we're going to go through that exercise. But for me, it's just this like stuffy, heavy feeling of like confusion and fear and worry. And yeah, it's not for me, (laughs) for me, for a lot of people, it's not a very fun place to be until I really flip the script and say, in my head, I changed my mindset around it. I'm like, actually, this is a great place to be because I can do anything. Well, it also sounds like kind of a timing thing for you too. Like yeah. you're waiting for the timing to be right, to right. jump into the jump rope, you know, and you know, when is it going to be the right, is it the right time now or should I wait? And then we hesitate. Now, the other way that I see people getting stuck. So this is kind of like a waiting to take the right action at the right time. And so in all that waiting, you feel stuck. The other way I see people getting stuck is this, it's analogous to the bee or the fly that's banging his head against the glass, Mm -hmm. right? We've all had this experience where you're like sitting there eating breakfast in your house and you see this poor little fly like doing whatever it can to escape the window, you know, like get outside, escape the house. It's banging its head against the window. And as hard as it tries, you and I both know it's never going to break that glass. It's never going to get through to the other side. But all the time you're rooting for this fly and you realize that if it would have just like, you know, stopped hitting its head against the glass for a second and pulled back a few feet, like flew back, it would notice that there's an opening in the window, like five feet to the left or something like that, you know, and ah, there's the entrance or there's the exit. There's the way out. And this is how we feel at times is that we're just trying to bang our head harder. We go, it's not working. I'm not getting the results. So let's put our nose to the grindstone and dig harder and push harder. This is why I'm so against this hustle. When something's working, go all in. Give it 100% of who you are. But that's not hustle. What I get worried about and concerned about is that when you're stuck, when something's not working, your only antidote or the solution is just to work harder at it. Mm -hmm. And how long is this bee or this fly going to hustle banging its head against the glass before it finally gives up and says, you know, I'm dead. Right. And that's what ends up happening. And then, and you know, we don't die, but we give up. That's the worst thing. And so 
This is hopefully an opportunity to do what the fly should have done, which is stop for a moment and just take a step back, pull back a little bit and see a bigger picture. And ultimately, that's the first step. And that's really what I want from everybody here is that if you do feel stuck, you feel like you've been pounding your head against the glass, you've been doing the work and it's not working, then we have to acknowledge that there might be something that you're not seeing, that you're too close to it, that you're too busy hustling and working that you can't notice what you don't notice. You don't see the unseen and that's okay. That's normal. This happens to all of us. So the answer isn't to actually lean in more and jam the square peg harder into the round hole, but to stop and to take a step back. Again, ultimately, that's what every episode I'm trying to do on these podcasts really entails is getting us to just like stop and take a step back for a moment and look. Get some perspective. Some perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I want to take you through something and we'll see if this can help for those of you who do feel stuck or if you don't at the moment and you know that, well, stuckness is an inevitability, right? Maybe stuckness is just the resistance before reaching that whole new level. Maybe stuckness is a good thing. We just need to do something a little different to get to that next level. So let's begin. First of all, we have to start with, you know, the premise that all we have is now this moment. And to really see that and experience that you can just get present to this moment. One way we can do that is just to take a a big, deep breath. Maybe you're going for a walk as you listen to this episode, you're driving your car, maybe you're multitasking, maybe your brain is off doing multiple things. But this is a chance, an opportunity for you to get really present to this moment because it's all we ever have is just a series of these present moments. And sometimes your brain starts to go crazy when you realize like, that's it. You know, our brain tends to either focus in the past or focuses in the future. And you know, when it's in focusing in one or the other, right? In the past, there tends to be things like anger and resentment and sadness. And in the future, there's worry and anxiety. But in the present, that's where we have power. And those emotions don't really you know, they don't really hang out with us in the present because where we focus our attention, our emotion isn't an indicator of where we're focusing. So in the present moment, this moment right now, what we have is really the chance for infinite possibility to create whatever you want. Like if you could imagine that in every moment, including this moment right now, is like a blank canvas where you can paint anything, you can create anything, you realize that in the present, we have infinite potential. That's magic. And so in this moment, we have access to taking actions, right? We, you know, no matter how spiritual you are or want to be and how much you're excited about that. And we can, you know, there's a phrase that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Well, in this reality, everything is, you know, based off of actions that we take, right? And we're here to take actions and do physical things, obviously. So you can take actions in this moment. You can choose whatever actions you want to take. And it's the actions that you choose to take in this moment that will create tomorrow's results or the results of the future, right? So you get that. Okay. So your actions in this moment can create tomorrow or the future's results. Like, If you decide to work out today or go to the gym or eat healthy or choose the banana over the hamburger, right? That's a choice and an action you take that's going to have a consequence, an impact or a result in the future. Maybe just a moment from now or maybe a year from now. And that's really, you know, all we have is a series of actions that we can take in every moment to create results in the future. Now, the tricky part, and I believe this is why we truly get stuck, is that we don't really approach every moment from a blank campus. You know, there's that whole concept, especially when people talk about relationships, they talk about baggage. 
right? You know, like, oh, he's got a ton of baggage. Well, what does that mean? You know, it doesn't mean they're walking around with a bunch of suitcases, but it does mean that they're walking around with a lot of stuff from their past. And that stuff from the past is affecting who they are in this moment. So ideally, we would love to approach every moment in the present as a blank canvas to do whatever we want, absent of, you know, any constraints or restrictions from our past, this baggage that people talk about. But that's not what happens for most of us. We use the results of yesterday, of our past, as part of the determinant, like the factors, the variables that determine what actions we take in this moment. And when you do that, it simply gives you more of what you've already gotten. This is a vicious, vicious cycle, and this is why we feel stuck. Now, I'll give you an example, but I want you to really get that this is why we have this feeling of stuck, is that we're using whatever has happened in the past to determine the actions in this moment, and when we do that, the actions are just yielding more of the same results that we got in the past and the future, which is just a vicious cycle that repeats. Okay? And what we have to get, because a lot of people say, well, yeah, that's reality. That's the way it is. You know, it's the economy or my financial situation or what my spouse did or whatever. And that's who they are. And that's the way it is. And we're taking what has happened or the interpretation that we have on what has happened in the past. And we now bring it into our present and create actions that keep us perpetuated in that same reality that we've used. Hence, stuck. So, if we've made decisions in the past that leave us financially broke, we now make decisions from a place of being broke. We will make our decisions in the future, or decisions about the future in this moment, based about, you know, the sum of our past, which is like, you know, as of in this very moment, there's no money in the bank account. But you say, but James, that's reality. That's the way it is. You know, if I log in right now to my bank account, there is 33 cents, which I've definitely, that's the exact lowest number I had in my bank account when it wasn't overdrafted. And I understand. But what you'll need to understand is to get unstuck. We must be willing to create actions in this present moment that are not contingent upon or determined by the results of our past or this reality that we've created that was created by our past. Otherwise, we will have this feeling of being stuck. So right now, this still might seem a little esoteric and intangible, but we're going to bring it around full circle. I promise. So I'm starting kind of real big and up in the air, but does this make sense so far, Phoebe? Absolutely. I know. I, <laughs> when you're talking about the relationship thing, I was just like nodding my head. I see so many people and people that I'm working with are people in Facebook groups, you know, talking about things like this, that they don't understand why it's not working. And you're like, just pause for a minute and understand this. So I'm, I really hope, well, as we go through the exercise, I don't want to give anything away, but as we go through the exercise, you're going to start to learn and see how to put all of this together in really actionable steps. So yeah. Let's get going. So what I really want you to challenge first and foremost is what you are calling, well, this is the way it is. This is fact. This is reality. This is my current situation. And, you know, we can have arguments all day about that, whether it is or isn't. And the only thing I'm going to say is that if you want to change that current reality as you experience that way it is as it is, then you must be able to take an action that is not contingent upon or determined by that reality because it'll simply yield you more of the same, right? It'll keep you stuck. So the only way out of stuck, the only way to get unstuck is this, to create a future worth living, a future, a result, a way of being that is worth getting up 
in the morning for something that will yank you out of bed in the future and pull that future into your life now and act as if. I think this gets into the whole, what do you want? And knowing, you know, and having, and that's why all of these things just fit together so well. And I'm listening to this being like, yeah, this is why the, you know, morning visualizations, like being able to pull all of those things back into your life right now, rather than, oh, one day it's going to, you know, this is going to all look the way it does. But like, how does that look right now for me to actually step into that future life, that future, you know, like you said, that future worth living. So all of these just fit together so well. I'm excited. So to give you some more context, I am going to share one of my favorite passages from one of my favorite business books that I highly recommend called E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And in this book, he references Tom Watson. He was the founder of IBM. And in the heyday of IBM, Tom Watson was asked an important question, which was basically, Tom, what do you feel most attributed to the phenomenal success of IBM? And here is the exact answer that Tom Watson delivered. And within it are the three steps that you can follow yourself to get you unstuck at any time. So here it is. IBM is what it is today for three special reasons. The first reason is that at the very beginning, I had a clear picture of what the company would look like when it was finally done. You might say I had a model in my mind of what it would look like when the dream, my vision, was in place. The second reason was that once I had the picture, I then asked myself how a company which looked like that would have to act. Then I created a picture of how IBM would act when it was finally done. And the third reason IBM has been so successful was that once I had a picture of how IBM would look when the dream was in place and how such a company would have to act, I then realized that unless we begin to act that way from the very beginning, we would never get there. In other words, I realized that for IBM to become a great company, I would have to act like a great company long before it ever became one. To me, this is the most profound thing I have ever heard. This is simply about creating a vision of a future worth living and pulling that into our lives now and acting as if. So in a moment, I'm going to give you the three steps to do this so you can all do this with me. You can all do this alongside with me. But I want to give you a great example that I've shared in the past. And this has to do with a specific struggle that I dealt with. So as you know, we sell online courses and membership sites. And one of the things that I was so frustrated by was the technology piece and all the technology issues I was having running my membership site and my online courses. So we used a combination of WordPress, which is free, and plugins and themes. And it really felt like a duct tape together solution. And, you know, I'm then I'm using like inexpensive VAs in the Philippines in order to kind of build out the site. And we kept having problems of the site not loading, the site breaking down, the site getting hacked, plugins getting outdated, videos not loading, every problem that you can imagine for my customers. And it was really frustrating. And I put up with it for a really long time, like much longer than I should have. And Then I stumbled upon, actually heard through the grapevine that Kajabi was releasing a new members area where they would actually host all of this for you in one place. And it's basically like upgrading from like a Pinto to a BMW. And for me in an instant, even though it's very expensive, like Kajabi is expensive, it was a no brainer. And I got really excited about sharing Kajabi with others and saying, you got to get off WordPress, you got to use Kajabi. And so many people gave me a lot of resistance about it, saying it's too expensive. It's too much money. Why would I ever get this when WordPress is free? And because I have that commitment to my customers, like I got really concerned because I'm like, they don't know the problems that I went through with WordPress. And so what I really started teaching about and developed and I'm using here as a great example 
is when you are understand or when you're clear on the business you're creating, the vision you have for your company and the, the revenue you want to generate, you use that as the litmus test for the decisions you make. Now, not then, now. So people will say, it's too expensive. So I'm going to go for the free route. And then I would say, well, great. What is your goal as a company? And they say, well, I want to do a million dollars a year. Awesome. So would a million dollar a year company go for the cheap, free, duct tape together route that always breaks down? And the immediate answer is no, of course not. But this is what we do. And so today, the way I run my business is making decisions and acting as if I am already the company that I am creating three to five years down the line. And so that means upgrading to the BMW of course hosting platforms is a no-brainer. A $5 million a year company should be on nothing less than that. And that has made all the difference in the world. So there's this analogy I have of a pot and a plant, right? So if you ever have done some gardening before, you know that when you decide to plant like a potted plant, the pot itself is the very thing that holds the soil, holds the plant in place, and allows for the environment for this plant to grow. But ironically, it can also be the very thing that limits the growth of the plant. Because as the plant grows, the root system will hit the edges of the pot and it stunts the growth. And so what we do is we create this pot, we plant our seeds, we do the work, and then we realize that at one point or another, the very thing that created the plant or the growth in the first place is now the very thing that is limiting us. And so what we have to do first is get a bigger pot. We have to create a bigger framework. You know, when the pot is analogous to your mindset, your beliefs, your way of thinking, everything. It has to have, if you want the tree to grow more, you have to get the bigger pot first, right? If I want to grow my team, well, I need to create more space for that team first, whether it's a bigger office or create more positions before I can fill it. You need the bigger pot first before you can fill it. You need the higher quality stuff. You need the top of the line stuff in order to grow into a top of the line company. You need to do that first, but we do it backwards, don't we? We say, well, I'll do this when. Once I make a million dollars, then I'll upgrade from the free duct tape crappy stuff. And I say, no, that's backwards. And this is why we always like to say, and we've said it on the podcast before, what got you here won't get you there. And so to get unstuck, it's really about identifying, well, what does there look like? And then who do I need to be? And what environment do I need to create now that facilitates what will get me there? What environment do I need to create that will allow that goal or that vision or that outcome to thrive now? That's the only way out of stuck. Does that make sense? It does. And I know that a lot of the pushback that we get when we've talked about this on like coaching calls and stuff like that, people just say, you know, well, yeah, this is the common phrase that I know we always address is like, well, of course, that's great for you because you have a million dollar business and you can do that. And I think one of the points that I kind of want to hammer home here because I've been in this position where, yeah, I could go for the Ferrari, but you know, eh, this one looks a little bit better. You know, this little whatever car. I don't know anything about cars, but this car looks better and it can get me there and then I'll get the Ferrari when I have the money. And I think the concern or just the point is that when your vision is big enough and is bigger than you, that commitment is there. And I think it's the belief in yourself and also your commitment to serving the customers and serving the people that makes that decision a complete no brainer. So you're creating that container to put all of the people and all of the things to create that future life. And I think that's why it's so important to get really clear on what the vision of the business is or your vision for your life. And I don't think enough people, or I certainly don't, spend enough time actually figuring out what that looks like. And so obviously that cycle of the stuck is really difficult. It's a hard pattern to get out of because I don't actually know 
the direction that I'm going. So taking the time to actually, you know, I've talked about it before that journaling is my outlet. So when I journal, I light up because I see where I'm headed. And then that then determines all the actions that I'm going to take from there on out. So I love this kind of process that we're going through. Here's the thing is that when you say, well, that's easy for you to say, or you have a list or you have this, that immediately takes you out of control of your life. That immediately takes you out of the game. That is the most dangerous thing that we can do or say to ourselves is, well, that's easy for you to say. Anything that you say after that is more detrimental to you than anything else. Because instead of talking to the possibility of what you want, instead of talking and speaking and acting into your vision, you're actually getting off the hook and making an excuse for why you don't have results. Because at the end of the day, anything you want to say about somebody else, that's easy for you to say you have a big list. You have a bunch of sales. You've been doing this for so long. They all started at zero. And they didn't let the fact that they started at zero stop them. And neither should you. Don't get off the hook. Don't make it a cop out that someone else has been doing this longer. They have more results. They've got bigger numbers because they all started at the same place that you're currently at or were at when you started. Plain and simple. But they didn't let that stop them. And I don't want that to stop you as well. So I want to wrap up you know, this episode with a quick and simple exercise that really recaps what we're talking about here, how to get unstuck. The answer is in three steps. Step number one is to identify your vision for your future. This is an opportunity to get extremely, extremely selfish. This is why I keep asking in all the episodes, what do you want? What do you want? It always comes back down to what do you want? Because if you're not clear on what you want and you don't stand in a place where you own it, declare it and say that you deserve it. Well, someone else is going to just, you know, impose what they want all over you and you're going to be doing what they want and not what you want. So what is a vision that gets you so lit up and excited? And the thing is, if it feels unreal, if it feels impossible, then just put more time in between it. She's like, okay, well, this is my five year goal. Okay, it's fine. What is the ultimate vision that when your business is done, your company is done, the things that you're building and growing towards are done, what does it look like and why? That's the second piece of this. Why is that important to you? Put the why in there because when it gets tough and you can remind yourself of why you're doing this, maybe it's because you want to travel the world or live in an extraordinary home with your spouse where you wake up to the ocean view every day. That's my why. Then that's going to get you back on the horse emotionally when you're feeling down. So that's step one, identify your vision for the future. Step number two, you want to write out whatever that vision is, how would you or your business operate when that vision has been fulfilled? So if you want a million dollar company, well, what type of decisions does that company make? How do they act? How does that company act? What do they do? How do they think? And then step three, duh, is to operate that way right now. So if it's to build a million dollar company, you would always be asking questions like, is this what a million dollar company would do? Is this how a million dollar company would operate? So one of my friends in the industry uses the Oprah Winfrey litmus test. And I love this. So one of their goals is to be featured by Oprah. That's a big vision. And that really indicates a huge benchmark for them. So everything they do goes through the lens of, is this something that Oprah would be proud to promote? Would Oprah promote this? Would Oprah share this? Would Oprah want to share this? And that becomes their lens for how they determine what actions they take. They're not asking questions like, hey, we're broke right now, so what's the cheapest solution? You know, I can't afford this, so what can I do? Right? We're acting as if our vision has been fulfilled. That is the way out of unstuck. So to repeat this really quickly to recap, step number one, identify your vision for the future, whether it's one year, three year, five year, 10 year, I don't care. It's whatever vision you kind of have is a blurry idea, get it crystal clear. Step number two, identify how you would need to operate or how you would operate in the future when that vision is fulfilled. And step three, pull that in now and operate as if it is already fulfilled. Make decisions as that million dollar company today. So 
that is the way out of stuck. I hope you found this valuable. I hope you'll take the time to follow those three steps, that little exercise that we gave you. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. This is the Mind Your Business Podcast. If you haven't left us a rating or review yet on iTunes, please head over there and do that now. We absolutely love seeing your reviews and comments coming in. That's jameswedmore.com forward slash iTunes. We got many extraordinary new episodes and interviews coming your way. So make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Are you frustrated that no matter how hard you hustle, no matter how much you get done in a day, you still feel like you have a little results to show for it? Do you feel like you're doing everything right, but there's still something missing? Well, what if there was an easier way? What if your business could be fun, effortless, and profitable? Phoebe and I have put together a free audio MP3 for you, compiling the 77 business affirmations for creating success from the inside out. And we wanna give it to you absolutely free. This is your chance to rewire your brain for bigger results in your life and your business. To get instant access absolutely free, simply visit 77affirmations.com. That's the number 77affirmations.com.